When children are behaving badly, it is so easy to focus on the bad behavior, bad as in unproductive, uh, arguing, whining, hitting their sibling, not doing an assignment, but playing video games instead. Uh, even when we love and teach, we find it easier, it's more measurable, more concrete to teach, find mistakes and teach about mistakes and forget the love that the child needs. That's kind of just human of us, normal. So what can we do to increase the loving, which makes the learning far more possible, more likely? Teaching is easy, but without love, there is no listening or learning. A big and often neglected part of loving is, surprise, fun. Kids love fun almost uniformly. So why wouldn't they want to be also loved in a fun way or do anything else in a fun way? I've watched parents say, I love you in words to their kids. And very, very often it happens like this. I love you, but I need to talk to you about, see, I love you is just an introduction to a criticism. I love you, spoken as the child is going to bed, in which case now it's just kind of a social convention, doesn't really mean very much. I love you as the almost obligated end in today's world of a text or other communication, or it turns into an emoji or whatever. It becomes pretty ordinary, expected, and really not especially fun. Pretty much kids hate it when life isn't fun. So how can you have more fun with your kids? Sure, you can do activities, you can go on Pinterest, and you can read about activities till you drop dead. And I'm not diminishing the benefit of doing activities with kids. But I have heard thousands now of accounts from children, from their parents, from adults who are describing when they were children, remembering the activities of their childhood, and the activities themselves are not what touches a child, pretty much ever. We still need to do them, but not to do them. They're simply ways of delivering connection and loving. That's the goal of an activity, not to get a particular thing done, Again, you can go to Pinterest and you can get lots of things done, but so what? But I still recommend we go to Pinterest and get these activities because while we're doing the activities, we can express, express love with touching and looking and the way we give them positive feedback and other things that we're going to be talking about. Also, you can simply observe what they like to do and do it with them. Dads, for example, wouldn't ordinarily have it pop into their minds. Um, why don't I have a tea party with my daughter and her dolls? But if he's paying attention at all, he'll see that she does that. And if he brings up the possibility of him doing it with her, which she might not, that can turn into a pretty fun activity. Guys who do tea parties with their daughter's dolls are pretty cool, as long as their daughter's there. <laughs> and... Educate them. That's another activity that we can do that's often neglected. My grandchildren, for example, when they come, we go out into the woods and yeah, we go out and we walk and talk and hold hands. And But I teach them about things, about that tree and how that tree is different from that tree. And do you see why that tree branches in this way and that tree branches another way? Do you see why this tree has branches only on one side of the tree? And there are fun ways to educate our kids which of course requires that we know something. And if you don't, it's pretty easy these days to look up on the internet and find information about anything. So my grandchildren know how to, you know, operate a chainsaw and mix concrete and what trees are like, because those are activities I like. And then we also do activities that they like to do. And we look stuff up on the internet. But the most fun thing, is finding fun ways to tell them that you love them. Keep in mind that as I list a few, one key activity to really fun things is often that they're unexpected. For example, getting a gift um, on your birthday is nice, but doesn't have nearly the effect of, like, for example, hiding a gift in their 
under their pillow or in a made bed or in a cupboard or doing something out of the blue that for just no reason at all says, I love you. I think of the different, we as adults appreciate this. Uh, if I say to Donna, Donna, do you want to have my wife? Do you want to have, do you want to have dinner? Um, is there something I can do to help? Well, that's caring, but not terribly unexpected if it happens to be dinner time and I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> And not really any great effort to make it fun. But if I say to her, mm, what would you like to have for dinner? And she names a couple of general categories. And I say, well, you know, that's a really good idea. because, And because I have already know ahead of time her favorites, I can say to her, you know, the delivery guy for the Mexican place should be here in about two and a half minutes. Because I had placed an order an hour before. Now, that is unexpected and therefore way more fun than if we just do it the ordinary way. All, we can turn anything into fun. Now, how to tell your kids that you love them in fun ways and sometimes unexpected ways. Let's say you're sitting outside in the evening. It's quiet. It's dark. Normally, we just sit. We might talk. doesn't really matter what the topic of the conversation is. But you reach out with your hand, which many of us just wouldn't ordinarily do. You don't wait for them. You reach out and put your hand on theirs and hold it tenderly. Oh, we're, we're way into fun now. And you say something like, I'm just giving you ideas. I'm not saying repeat these things. I love looking at the stars. It's all so big. Do you know that the Milky Way is X trillion miles across. It kind of reminds me of how much I love you. Well, now I'm promising you they're not looking at the sky. They're going to be looking at you. And you say, like, crazy, like this big. That's just a little fun way of telling a child you love them. You have a conversation with a child about whatever, school, friends, video games. You look them in the eye. We tend not to do that. And when they're done, you say, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. We forget to add that at the end. That's the whole point of the conversation. You don't care what the name of their friends are. You don't care that their friend j just went on vacation to Pensacola. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation with you. Or during the conversation, you just reach out periodically and, and just touch their hand and wiggle your fingers. What am I doing? I'm getting in there, into their soul emotionally. During a conversation about pizza or Pensacola, who cares? Another example. Hold out your hands like this and say, how much? Now, you're going to come up with your own. I'm just giving you one. I don't even know if my hands are on the screen. How much? And you're going to get a puzzled look from the child the first time. And they're going to say, what do you mean how much? You're going to say, how much do I love you? And then you keep spreading your hands further and further out. And they get a big grin on their face as you spread your hands out to infinity. If you're really limber, you can reach your hands around the back and touch your fingers together. I can't do that. You're in the car while they're talking. And you say, this is an example of unexpected. And you bark, hey, which is often a prelude to telling them to pipe down that you're going to make a difficult turn. You need them to be quiet or whatever. And when you say, hey, everybody stops talking. And then you say, what have I told you guys? Now, their brains are going to be spinning with what rule did they just break? <laughs> this is the unexpected part. And then you say, what have I told you? That I love you more than anything. They love to be played with. They love the unexpected. They love it when you come up with fun stuff that would never have occurred to them. That's just one example. A child, another child enters the room. You're obviously busy reading or you're working on dinner. Whatever it is, you stop everything. You say, I was just, whatever, fixing the meal, reading, working. Do you know what occurred to me? This is you talking to your child. There's a pause because the child's head's going to be spinning. I don't know what just occurred to you. How much I love seeing you just come into the room. I know Donna likes it when I say that. So will your kids. You're sitting at a dining room table. 
and you say, with one kid, two, who cares? You know what my favorite thing is about this meal? Pause. You. Being here with you. Some of this stuff sounds almost too syrupy. Oh, no. Your, your kids never get tired of this. They may even roll their eyes and mock you and, and supply the words if you've said them before, and they still like hearing it. You walk into the room, there's a kid sitting on the couch, you plop down right next to him. And I mean right next, so close that as you sit, it squishes them and moves them over a little bit. And you put your arm around him and say, I am so glad to see you. Uh, I know kids who can remember the one time that ever happened to them in their lives, or remember for the rest of their lives, the only time that they experienced it from somebody other than their parents. It's unforgettable. We love it. A child enters the room. You throw your arms around them. If they're young, you drag them to the floor. Remember, unexpected. You drag them to the floor, look them in the eyes. You touch them in the center of their chest, and you say, you. I love you. Kids love that. And often they'll say, no, I love you. Oh, now it turns into a very fun game. Uh, I do this with my grandkids. No, I love you. I love you more. No, they come back. It's a very fun game. Fun. They like it when we play with them. Bedtime stories. Find a great bedtime story somewhere. They're, come on, everywhere. If you can't find a bedtime story on the internet, you don't know how to type. And you tell a bedtime story to them, but instead of just reading it, you, you have read it before, and you tell the story, you can read it, but you put in their name as the hero of the story. Oh, my children to this day, if you ask them what their favorite thing was about their childhood, it was the hero stories. So if, if I'm asking Mike, Mike says, oh, I like the Mike hero stories because each story was individualized to a child and to their gifts or characteristics. Another example, a child drops something and breaks it. And one look at the face tells you that your child is just devastated by breaking this thing. You rush to their side and you say, calm, I'll help you pick this up. You are way more important to me than this thing. Donna has done that for me more times than I could tell you. And I still love it. I love it every bit as much the last time as the 20 times before it. Errands, take them with you on errands. Hold their hand as you drive. Hold their hand as you walk in the store. Now, if you've never done this before, the child will be a little bit surprised when you hold their hand walking in the store. They might even look around wondering if anybody's seeing you. But if you keep doing it, they'll start grabbing your hand. This is how the fun starts. Misdirection is another form of unexpected fun. Like, do you have your phone on you? Now, the child is expecting some kind of grilling. So then you just sit on his or her lap if they're on, a, on the couch. And that's hard to do if they're standing. And you say, you need squeezing. And then the kid goes, what does that have to do with a phone? And you say, oh, nothing. I was just making you think of something else, so this would be a surprise. <laughs> Kids love <laughs> fun. And often we know how to have fun, but we tend not to do it with our kids because we focus on those things that are wrong. Describing their gifts. We've talked about that. Describing how a child is gifted in intelligence, music, uh, being observant, whatever, but make it fun. You say a child observes something and you say, you are so observant. In fact, you're kind of a freak. They love to hear the word freak applied to them in a positive way. Fun. A child's leave for, leaving for school, you pull out a small favorite toy of theirs, little teeny toy, you know, pocket size, and you say, put this in your pocket. This would be for smaller kids. And during the day, reach in and feel it and remember that I love you. If you kiss it as you put it in their pocket, it's even better. These are just some examples. You, you, you get the feeling of what I'm talking about. There are thousands of ways to do this. It's not just teaching. It's not just caring in your heart for them, although that's huge because they can feel it. We need to show them that we care about them. And 
it's all the more memorable if we can do it in a fun way. Watch a child who is not having fun. They hate it. When you create fun, you're introducing more than what they even know they want or need. Like when they enter the room and you throw them to the ground and poke at them and kiss them. And you say, oh, I was hoping it was you. There's another example. You throw them on the couch and smother them with kisses and poke their face and say, I'm so glad you're in my family. Fun is immediately self-rewarding and makes it possible for them to be free of fear so they can hear the teaching when it comes. See, a mother wrote to me. She said, quote, I practiced doing something that you recommended to me. I get emotional when I even think the words. I was with the kids the other day and I said to them, quote within a quote, I said, you have no idea how much I enjoy being with you kids. What a pleasure you are to me in my life, she said. Now, she's talking back to me. What better gift is there than to know someone loves being with you, that you are a treasure to them, that they love, that, that they love you, that you love them. What a treasure to be surrounded by that. She said, she concludes, I have to practice more giving them these gifts of my love and ha having fun doing it. These moments are sweet and moving and making me cry as I write them. Love your kids, teach them, and while you're at it, have fun doing it.